All right, in this video, this is going to be mixed review part four to the ATIT's math for the T6 test. The two questions that we'll work on here, 11 and 12, will be somewhat similar to the mathematics section quiz in the ATIT study manual. Now, there's technically more than two questions here because 11, we have an A, B, C, D, and then number 12, well, that's just one question, but we're still hitting on various things. Number 11, we have the following. Of the 250 people at a convention, 130 of them are women. So automatically, when I read that, before I even read a question, I'm thinking to myself, okay, there's 130 women out of 250 people. If we find the difference between these two numbers, that's going to tell us how many men we have there. So therefore, if we subtract these, we get 120 men. That may be useful, it may not be, but that's what's going through my head when I read a problem like that. Now, question A, what is the ratio of women to the total number of people at the convention? We can write a ratio one of two ways. You can write it as a fraction, or you can write it with a little uh, colon in between your two numbers. I'm going to write it as a fraction for right now. So the ratio of women to the total number of people. Well, let's write those two numbers down. The women, we said there were 130 women. The total number of people, 250. And that is what's important here, is to make sure very easy to overlook that and maybe you may think, oh, we're finding the ratio of women to men. No, not in part A, women to the total. And let's simplify this very quickly by dividing the top and bottom by 10, since they both end in zero. And therefore, our ratio is going to be 13 to 25. Now, that is the same thing as being uh, this right here. 13 with a little colon and then not a 1, but 13 to 25 with a colon in between them. So something like that. You can see a ratio written like that as well. Question B. Find the ratio of men to the total. So men to total. And the point I want to make here is that you read these very carefully. So the men is going to be 120. The total is 250. And dividing these by 10, we get 12 to 25. And again, you can write that as a colon representation as well. Now, question C and question D. You want to be careful when you read this. So question C, what's the ratio of women to men? So C, women to men we do not use the 250 in this problem. We just use women. We know there's 130 women at the convention. Men, there's 120 men, which we found earlier. So even if we didn't answer, you know, you're only going to have one of these questions in a single question on the test. So, we, you know, we didn't even really do these two. If this was the question we had to answer, this is what we would need to be writing down. 130 over 120. Simplifying this fraction, you get 13 to 12. Again, we're just dividing by 10 there. So the ratio of women to men is 13 to 12. What this really means is the following. Uh, for every 13 women that we have at the convention, there are going to be 12 men at the convention. So if you have like 25 people, think about this. If you have 25 people, of those 25, probably 13 of them are going to be women and 12 of them are going to be men. That's how we kind of interpret that ratio there. So I want to throw that out there to help you understand what we're really finding here. And question D, what's the ratio of men to women? So really, we can just reverse this fraction or find the reciprocal of that fraction. But I'm going to write it down anyway. Men to women. So that's going to be the 120 up top over 130. And if we simplify this, dividing the top and bottom by 10, we get 12 to 13. Again, at any given point in time, we can write these ratios with a colon in between them as well. You may run across that on the ATIT's test. All right, on to the next question. John does not use a lot of data on his cell phone plan. His cellular provider gave him the option of paying a monthly fee of 50 bucks for unlimited minutes and text plus an additional $9.50 for each gigabyte of data that he uses. The fine print of the contract states that any fraction of a gigabyte used will be charged proportionally to the price per gigabyte. That's actually good news. Sometimes the fine print's not good news. Uh, you know, the, the fine print could have said something like the following. It could have said, anytime you go over a certain gigabyte, it's automatically going to round you up to the next one. 
Um, that's not so good fine print. But what this fine print here is saying is saying the following. If John uses 2.1 gigabytes, he's going to be charged for 2.1 gigabytes. So it's going to be like a fraction since it's 2.1, 2.1, you know, he wouldn't pay the full $9.50 for that little 0.1 of a gigabyte that he went over. So again, this is good fine print. It could be bad fine print sometimes. But anyway, John has budgeted 80 bucks for his phone plan, excluding taxes and hidden fees. So we're not really worried about uh, the taxes and hidden fees here. Right, and any quality that allows John to determine the number of gigabytes that he can use. So in any quality, why are we going to use an any quality here? John has budgeted 80 bucks for his phone plan. So as long as he stays at $80 or less, listen to what I said there, any quality. Any quality is going to be these little symbols here. A less than, a greater than, a less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And since budgeting, anytime you budget, as long as you stay at that number or below it, then you've done what you wanted to do, right? When you budget something. So we want to use an, an inequality, and this is going to be the good one to use, but it depends on how you write it as well. So flat rate, 50 bucks, regardless of how much data John uses, he's going to have to pay $50 every month, plus $9.50 for each gigabyte of data that he uses. So this right here is not going to be correct. $50 plus $9.50. This would be correct if all he used was exactly one gigabyte of data. Because he's going to pay $9.50 for each gigabyte. So we have to actually multiply by a variable. And I'm just going to use G for gigabytes. He's going to pay $9.50 per gigabyte. So if we think about this little piece right here inside of this box, if we take $9.50 times the number of gigabytes that we use, that's how much John is going to pay for his data. But then we have to remember $50 flat rate. So adding these two things together, we want this to be less than or equal to 80. That's what John wants it to be so that he is staying within his budget. So his budget will be fine or he'll be happy as long as he stays at 80 or less. And that's exactly what this inequality here stands for. It's going to be important for you to understand how these inequalities work because I think one of your questions on the T's will be something along, hey, come up with this inequality. And that's all you have to do. We're going to go a little bit further here. But on the T's test, you may have to come up with that inequality on your own, and that may be choice A, B, C, or D. So I want to point out those inequalities there and thinking about what it means to budget. So in this case, we want our payment to be less than or equal to 80. Let's solve this inequality. Let's take it one step further. So we solve an inequality just like an equation. We're going to subtract that 50 from both sides. And on the left-hand side, we have $9.50 times the number of gigabytes is going to be less than or equal to 30. Now, I hope that makes sense there. If you think about it, John, he's budgeting 80 bucks for his total plan. Automatically, out of that 80 bucks, 50 of it's going to go for the monthly fee. That leaves him with $30, $30 here to uh, pay for data. So $9.50 times the number of gigabytes needs to be less than or equal to 30 bucks. The way we can get G by itself is to divide by $9.50. So taking that 30 and dividing by $9.50, we're getting somewhere around three point blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's take that, let's copy it, and let's look at this number a little bit more and talk about, you know, how many gigabytes can he really use? Can John use three gigabytes? Absolutely. Uh, but when we round here, you know, you, one would say, you know, G is less than or equal to, if we round this to the nearest, let's say, tenth, 3.2. Technically, that's not right because if he used 3.2, that is a little bit bigger than this number right here, right? And let's look at that in a slightly different context here. 50 bucks, and let's add on $9.50 times, let's suppose he did use 3.2 gigabytes. Well, notice what his monthly charge is going to be, $80.40. I know it says 80.4, but just imagine an extra zero being on the end. Technically, he's gone past his budget a little bit. So really, where does he want to stay around? He wants to stay somewhere around 3.1 gigabytes. Now, if we did 3.1 gigabytes, notice he's under budget by like 55 cents, not much. 
but he definitely don't he don't want to use four gigabytes or five gigabytes but somewhere in the neighborhood of 3.1 to 3.2 gigabytes you know he'll stay within his budget and if john used 3.2 gigabytes hopefully he wouldn't be too upset with a 80 dollars and 40 cents uh, monthly bill even though he did go a little over his budget but definitely he don't want to be using something like five gigabytes he's gonna have almost a hundred dollar cell phone bill so I hope that makes sense there. Be careful when you when you round because technically he would be slightly over budget if he did use 3.2 gigabytes. So somewhere answer around 3.1, uh, 3.15 gigabytes, not 3.16. Look at this, 3.16. Well, that's 3.15. Notice he's slightly under budget. But if we do 3.16, look. We're two cents over budget. And the reason why we're a little bit over the budget is because 3.16 is the rounded answer here if we round it to the nearest hundredth. However, you know, 3.15789 blah, 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 blah is slightly smaller than 3.16. I hope that makes sense there. And there you have it. That's two more examples from the mathematics section quiz of the ATIT study manual. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.